deploying Blazor Server is really easy. But instead of me just showing you a few magic steps, we are breaking down the deployment process and understanding each piece well. That way, you are prepared to use each step in the real world with a real project. So far, we've created a Blazor Server project. We've displayed the connection string. We set up a GitHub repository. We configure a web app and we've set up our GitHub Actions to automatically deploy our site upon commit. Now in this video, we're gonna update our connection string automatically when we deploy to Azure. Now before we dive in, there are a few things I wanna share with you. First, if you're interested in C-sharp, then subscribe to this channel. There's over 500 videos here covering C-sharp and the related topics. Second, if you're looking for more free resources, go to imtimcorey.com and go to the resources section. And third, if you're looking for more in-depth training that gives you a full path from know nothing to prepare to use in the real world, I've got lots of training courses on imtimcorey.com to help you out. And if you buy those courses, you're helping to fund the free content. That way, everyone can have a great education in C Sharp, not just those who can afford it. So let's jump right in. And today, this is pretty easy to do. But I want to show you what we're looking at. So if we open up our site right now, notice that it says the default connection string is this is from appsettings.json. That's not where we want it to come from when we're in Azure. But there is a fix for this. Go to configuration here on the left. Wait for it to load. We have our connection strings. Say new connection string and choose default. Now, this is important. You have to match up the name with the name that is your connection string. So we go over here to our appsettings.json and look at default. So it's gonna look inside this connection strings section of your appsettings.json and look for default. That's what will override. If I change it to default with two L's in, in here, well, then it's not gonna override properly. So just be careful of that. Also, this value here can be whatever you want, but this would be the connection string you would be using for this site on Azure. Now, again, we're not actually connecting to a SQL server, but if we were, this would be the SQL server's connection string right here. But this is from Azure Web App uh, Configuration. Again, this is just to show off that's where it's coming from so that when you made a modification, that's all you have to do is update this value. Now we could do deployment slot settings. So if we did that, then we could say, hey, this is only for one slot. That way you can have multiple different slots. We'll get into slots later. But for now, this is just um, talking to our connection string and overriding it for this site. So I hit okay. And notice it's hidden value down here. It says default, hidden value. Click here to show. We show it, we click here again, it hides it. It says MySQL, doesn't really matter, um, not for this. If you were actually configuring it for uh, a specific type of connection string, then you know, say custom or whatever one applies best here. So for us, default works just great. Now, if we hit save, it's going to reboot our web server. So just note when you're doing this, it's gonna reboot your web server. It's not a long process. In fact, it's already done, but there is some caching issues here. Since I've already loaded the site, I'm gonna re restart again. Notice how fast it is. But over here, if we hit refresh, notice it says default connection string. This is from Azure Web App Configuration. I changed no source code. The source code is still the same. In fact, let's bring it over here. I'll hit refresh on our page, just to make sure that you know, no commits have been changed. And um, here, here, reload. Um, yep, still there. And if we come over here to our um, our app and go to our appsettings.json, it still says this is from appsettings.json. But yet over here, it's saying Azure Web App Configuration. That's because Azure Web App is securely overriding this value at runtime. So when the application loads up for the first time, it's pulling this value in and saying, oh, yep, I've got a value for this. Let's override that in our configuration. This is super powerful. This is something you definitely want to use when you're starting out. Now, 
as you go on, you may say, you know what? We've, we've outgrown this. We want to use Azure Key Vault. Great. Azure Key Vault is a great place to store all of your secrets and have everything. You can even have secrets for your developers versus your um, like local development versus your uh, staging and production and, and you know, central development. But and it's a little, a little slow right now. That's probably my internet connection. But, um, but for now, this is a secure, safe place to put your um, your connection information, and it's going to store all your information um, in a way that cannot be accessed externally. So only people who have access to this portal can access this. So this is a very secure place to put it, and it will allow you to give your developers access to the entire GitHub repository. They have access to all the code. They have access to make any change they want. They don't have access to do any of the actions. The actions are done automatically for them. Those actions get deployed automatically. And when they're deployed, that's when these get overridden and the, the new connection string is put in place. That means web developers can have full access to the code and yet not have the connection strings or other secrets for your servers, whether it's the development server, your staging server, or your production server. You can allow only your Azure admin to have access to this and make those changes. Also note, application settings. This is for any other settings you have in appsettings.json that you can override those settings as well so that if you had a username and password or something else in there that you needed to have updated for production, you put it in these places right here, and that will update your application when it restarts, which is going to restart every time you make a change here. So that's all it takes to upgrade your connection string and point it to somewhere else. So when I deploy suggestions.imtincore.com, I don't have the connection string in the deployment. That's on Azure and it automatically points to my production version of MongoDB. And then it just works. Whereas when I'm on development, I don't point to my production version of MongoDB so I can test things out and not have to worry about changing data. So it's a safe and secure and efficient way of doing that without any headache. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now, um, next up, what we're going to do is we're going to actually connect a custom domain name. Right now, we've got blazer-deploy-app.azurewebsites.net. We're going to change our domain name to be a custom domain name because that's something else you'd want to do when you deploy a real app to production. So we're going to do that in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.